Okay, start up. This is the second one on the installation. Now, previous one I added, I had the power and the grounds added. In this one, I've added the connections to the power and ground. And on the power, this one here, this is a 100 amp current sensor. This cable is going to a temperature sensor under here. All these parts can be bought at either DigitKey or Mauser. Now, let me get this out of the way. Here's the box it's going in. The hole for the imp power input is insulated. The ground is not. This is the input diode. It's a dual diode. The input will be going to that connection there and to these three right here. This will be epoxied. Now it's already got a coat of uh, heat sink epoxy on the back. That's to insulate it because it doesn't need to be grounded to here. And that metal under there is a ground or it's the center connection. So you don't want it to touch. So you put a thin layer of epoxy on there and let it harden. And then put another layer when you mount it. That's going to be the power input. This will be the ground and this will be the power out. There will be insulators on the outside too. That's about it. Now the capacitors are because the sig this thing produces some frequencies and this eliminates the... Notice it's on the temperature sensor too. Now these will be epoxied in here with epoxy heat sink compound, two part, and then there's the lid, but this will be mounted in here. The reason this, these wires are so small is only about 20 amps, it's 20 amps max, probably about 15 amps will be coming in through this. This is a dual 15 amp a diode and it can handle 30 amps in but it shouldn't take more than about 20 amps maximum to run the whole unit with an 80 amp output now I have a hole over here for connections the data and everything coming out there Anyway, that's the build so far. This is the box it's going in. That's all for now.